Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another study of God's Word. It's a beautiful Sabbath day, and I hope you had a very good week. My name is Joan Antoine, and with me is... Althea Barclay, and today is... Women's Ministry Day. So I'm going to pray, and then I'll read the scripture, and then you could do a summary of where we are. Okay. Will you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for blessing us with this beautiful fall day. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love, and your faithfulness towards us. Yes. To keep us throughout this week and to bless us now with this day of rest. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you've done. We come to you now to be with us throughout this day, be with us through this study, to free our minds of all of the distractions so we can focus on you, give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, because you are God. Forgive us of our sins now, we pray, dear Lord, and help that your words will flow through us so that your message will be received, and we will honor and glorify you alone. These mercies we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. So the scripture for today is, first of all, the um, topic is? Woman, you are valued. And the scripture reading is John 20, 10 to 18, and I'll read that. Mm -hmm. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and she, as she wept, she stopped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels sitting at the head and foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Because they have taken, oh sorry, um, lying, why are you crying, the angel asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She glanced over her shoulder and saw another, someone standing behind her. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Why are you crying, Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought she was, he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned towards him and exclaimed, teacher, don't cry. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father, but go Find my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my Father, my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. All right. So at the beginning of this chapter, we realized that Christ had died and uh, he was risen. So on that Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and other women, as um, we can see in Mark 15, 47, went to the tomb that early Sunday morning to sort of uh, continue the embalming of Jesus. But when they came, they saw the stone was rolled away. When Mary saw that, she ran to tell the other disciples that the stone was rolled away and the body of Jesus was not in the tomb. So Peter and John, they said John, the beloved, the, the beloved disciple. But in doing our research, we realized that beloved disciple was John. Yes. So both of them ran towards the tomb. John ran ahead of Peter, and they saw that Jesus' body was not there. So it's, it, it seemed as though they had... John went into the tomb as well with Peter, but John saw and believed, but Peter was a little doubtful. They both did not really study the scriptures enough to fully grasp that Jesus was risen. But on the other hand, somehow they did not talk to Mary after. They just go back home, as, the, as verse 10 says. But I want to, we, our focus today is on women. And we realized that they did not have the same status as men back then and even today. So, and that's not God's intention. So in 
looking through the Old Testament where in Numbers 27, 1 to 7, I'll present a scenario that tells you how God feels about women. And he is very fair. The story goes that um, in Numbers 27, 1 to 7, it shows where women were not allowed to own land. In fact, in Israel, a woman was treated like the property of her father and was then transferred to her husband via a bridal payment. In their humility and wisdom, the five daughters of Zelifihad influenced the making of a new law by God to allow women to own land. The daughters of Zelophehad lived at the end of the Israelites' exodus from Egypt as they prepared to enter the promised land. As time passed in the wilderness and the population changed, it was necessary to carry out a new census. This was to help plan the social and economic structures of the new nation. God said that the land was to be divided among the tribes in proportion to the size of their families. Each male head of household received an allotment. Zelifihad had died without a son. When his daughters realized that their father's name would be excluded when the land was given out because there was no made heir, they did an extraordinary thing that had not been heard of before. They asked Moses, Eleazar the priest, the chiefs, and the whole assembly for their right to inherit their father's property. Can you imagine five daughters in those, in those times? Five ladies, these men in a circle, in front of the tabernacle, and they went up to them boldly, imploring them, listen, my father died without an heir, and it is not right for the land to be given to somebody else when they are there. So in humility, Moses brought the matter to God. God responded that the plea of the daughters was just and that they should be granted their father's inheritance. God is just and fair and does not want women to be disadvantaged. He sees them as perfectly capable of owning and managing the land. So because those five daughters spoke, God said, it is fair. And because of them, God made a new law that if a man does not have a male heir, when he died, the land should go to the daughters. It's important to point out that that law wasn't a God law. That That's was right. a man law. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. man constantly says women aren't equal. Right. But right. we know from the beginning, Eve was made from the rib bone, mm -hmm. the center. She mm -hmm. was intended to be his equal. Mm -hmm. And even in this ruling that God pronounced on this law, he represent, he demonstrate that women are equal. Yes. We, we continue to um, face discrimination, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. unfair practices as mm -hmm. women, right. but when we really look into the Bible and how it is presented, it, mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. it is man who has made these rules That's and right. these decrees, yeah. not God. Yeah. And when we look at the verse that we're looking at today, which is John 20, 10 to 18, mm -hmm. we see something really important here, that when Mary, when the disciples were in, told by Mary that Jesus was taken from the tomb, that he mm -hmm. wasn't in the tomb, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they went ahead of him. They didn't see Jesus. Mm -hmm. They didn't see the angels. Right. They saw his, cl his grave clothes mm -hmm. folded and placed. Mm -hmm. But when Mary looked in, yeah. she saw angels. Mm -hmm. God withheld his presence mm -hmm. from the disciples, mm -hmm. the men, mm -hmm. and reserved that mm -hmm. for the women. That's right. So the persons, persons, because there was more than Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. there were other mm -hmm. women with her. Mm -hmm. The persons who were honored with being the first to see Jesus after he we came back from the dead, mm -hmm. when he was resurrected, yeah. was a woman. That's that right. That is a special 
privilege. Oh, yeah. And I believe it's intentional because God doesn't do anything by chance. That's God right. doesn't That's right. do things, oh, let's figure this out. Mm -hmm, God has mm -hmm. a long plan. He knows the beginning from the end. And mm -hmm. he intended that it would be women mm -hmm. who were blessed with this privilege. Right. Because right. women are just as important. It was women who were given the first message from Jesus after mm -hmm. he rose from the dead. Mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. women. And because women are important. Yes. Yes. And as we back up, remember when um, Mary went and called Peter and John, and they both ran together to the tomb? The reason, according to the Torah law, women has they have no legal standing That's right. as witness. That's right. So it was right for Peter and John to go together because they say in the midst of two or three witnesses. That's right. So Peter and John would testify that the tomb was empty. If Mary had said, okay, the tomb is empty. It would have been invalid because she was a woman. Because she and was a woman. her testimony doesn't mean anything. Exactly. At the time. Mm -hmm. So Jesus appears to Mary, she's standing there, she sees the angels, they speak to her, they ask her why she's crying, mm -hmm. she says that her, Jesus has been taken away. She's in a lot of grief. Yeah. She's very yeah. troubled yeah. because this is her redeemer, this mm -hmm. is her mm -hmm. this savior. Is a friend. Yeah. It's, it's beyond friend, he's saved her, he's mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. transformed her mm -hmm. life and he's gone. Now, everyone knew, they witnessed his death. Right. Everyone witnessed mm -hmm. his death. Everyone witnessed him being put in the tomb. Mm -hmm. And now, as she's going back to finish the burial process, he's not there. Mm -hmm. And so the angels are there, and her grief doesn't even allow her to acknowledge that she is in the presence of celestial beings. Right, right. She is so focused on her Jesus, mm -hmm, her mm -hmm, savior, mm -hmm, her teacher, mm -hmm. that she doesn't even make that connection. She just speaks to them, mm -hmm. and when she turns around and she sees this other presence, mm -hmm. she still doesn't make the connection. Yeah. And it's important to understand that when Jesus reaches out to her, and I think it's a little different in your um, Bible, mm -hmm. it says um, in 13, um, woman, why are you crying? Yes. Mm -hmm. When he first reached out to Mary, he, he called her woman. Why are you crying? Mm -hmm. And she didn't make the connection. She didn't see who it was. She didn't hear it. Because she was so much in grief. Exactly. That her, the amount of tears that were flowing, it blinded her perception of what is happening in front of her. That's right. So even... and. As I think about, you know, when she saw the two angels, one at the head and one at, that brought back to when God told Moses to build the mercy seat. Yes. The two cherubims, one was at the head and one was at the foot. Of. God That's, is so consistent. It's amazing. It's so interesting. And, and you know, to see that if, if, if you see an angel, you know it's an angel, you're going to be kind of a, in terror. But Mary, she didn't even realize, oh, they made They were glowing. <laughs> they say white, but they are glowing mm -hmm. beings. Mm -hmm. There's a difference than human presence. Right, But right. she didn't make that connection because she was so focused mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. finding Jesus. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus does something very important. Mary. He calls her by her name. And that's so significant. When we study human behavior, mm -hmm. our names is the sweetest so word yeah. to us. Yep. When yep. we hear our name, yep. it gets our attention. If you're trying to get your child's attention, call them anything else. When you call their name, they hear you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus called her by her name. Mm -hmm. And that's important. That's important. And it's by calling her by her name, and the way he said it, she recognized his voice. Before she did not recognize him because she, she was thinking about a dead man. Remember, she saw Christ die on the cross. She saw his body mutilated. She saw them embalming him. She saw all the bad things happening to him. So she did not expect to find a beautiful, transformed man. She was thinking about how he was when he died. But she was so focused on the dead man 
that she was incapable of recognizing the live man. But what is really important is Jesus calls Mary by name and she recognizes Jesus. Right, right. So didn't, Jesus didn't reveal himself to Mary by telling her who he was. Mm -hmm. Jesus revealed himself by reminding Mary of who she is, is yes. to him. Mm -hmm. So by calling her Mary, that's where she makes that connection by mm -hmm. understanding this is my teacher, this is my my leader, this mm -hmm. is my savior. Mm -hmm. And she calls him by her name. She calls, she call, he calls her by her name mm -hmm. so that she would understand that it is her that he is reaching to because she is that important. Right, and that brings us to what Christ said, my sheep know my voice. So when she heard his voice, she recognized who he was. That's, you know, and she, she just wanted to, as, as he called her name, she said, Rabboni is kind of surprised, shocked, and she wanted to cling to him because she was so happy that he was alive. And isn't, 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 a, isn't, it, isn't it amazing that Jesus' first appearance after his resurrection was to a woman? Now, you would have thought that there were three, three members of the inner circle of his, you know, with his disciples. You would have thought that he would contact them. He would reveal himself to, in, him, himself to them first. And because during that time, men were of more stature yes. than, than women, he would have um, focused on contacting them. But no, he chose a woman to tell the great news that he was risen. And we can't sort of understate the importance of this because the resurrection is the thing. It's, it's, exactly. it's the thing. So Jesus died. If he was not resurrected, that would nullify everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. was essential that Jesus come back to life mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. that is the proof that he is the son of God. Right. And so to put the... the um, privilege of mm -hmm. being the one to receive this message mm -hmm. it's it's significant yes and that that sort of makes it clear or is another example of just how important women mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. our savior and redeemer yeah. we are women are not a uh, second thought women are not property women are not servants women mm -hmm. are not um, less than women are entrusted with the important message of delivering the key focus of the whole resurrection story. Right. It was a woman that was chosen because women are that important. Women yeah. are that trusted. Women mm -hmm. are that mm -hmm. are that loved by Jesus. That right. they, that women would be given this responsibility. And to add to what you've just said, I'm going to read something here that I. Um, so he said, Jesus elevated the status of women wherever he went. In a society where women were relegated to second class status, Jesus healed them, defended them, depending upon their influence, and built genuine friendships with them. In first century Israel, women were so undervalued, seen as so untrustworthy, that they weren't even allowed to testify in court. Jesus gave a woman to spread the great news of his resurrection. And when I read about Jesus depending upon the influence, you know, Mary was rich. Mary Magdalene. She, she had money. Oh yeah, because when you read in Mark, um, in, in, in the book of Mark, you can see where she, um, Susanna, Junior Joanna. and Mary, Joanna, they gave of their means to Jesus. So she had some influence. She was not a prostitute as some people thought she was. She, no, she was not. This Mary Magdalene, even though Jesus had driven out seven demons out of her, maybe she had problems and he healed her. And because he did that, she valued his friendship. Jesus caused her to feel valued because at that time she was not. So she was very devoted to Jesus because of what he had done for her. And even in the, the scriptures that we're um, studying in um, 
Corinthians, mm -hmm. we, we see that the, and, and this is where um, Paul has um, gone out and he has spread the message in Corinth mm -hmm. and he's gone away now and now everyone is turning, well, people are turning away and some really disruptive things are happening mm -hmm. in the church. And it is a woman who sends the letter Chloe, to Paul. Yes. Yes. It was her who mm -hmm. sent the letter because there were leaders, there were male leaders in mm -hmm. every church mm -hmm. and they weren't doing the job. Mm -hmm. But Chloe reached out to Paul mm -hmm. to let him know of what was going on mm -hmm. so that the necessary um, intervention could be taken mm -hmm. to put the church back in the right path. And so we see women contributing in re very significant ways, mm -hmm. not only to the the spreading of the gospel, but in, in the development of the church and in the um, servicing of the community. Mm -hmm. So women are important. Yeah, and in addition to that, remember Aquila and Priscilla, they were also with Paul in his ministry. So some people may think that Paul put the women on a different level, but no, he lifted them, as, he lifted them up as well. So Paul, Aquila, and Priscilla, they were also, and Phoebe, they were also part of Paul's ministry. And it is rare that women are mentioned in the Bible. Hmm. So when they are mentioned, it is significant. Yes. Because when we go back to numbers, when the census were being mm -hmm, mm -hmm, conducted, mm -hmm. they, women weren't even counted. Right, exactly. Women weren't considered a part of the census. It mm -hmm. was the men and the cattle, and all of the other things that were counted, mm -hmm. and women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just <laughs> and women. Right, right. <laughs> even, even in the feeding of the 5,000, what they mentioned, there were 5,000 men besides yes. women and children. They did not count the women. So maybe if they had counted the women, it might have been 10,000, who don't knows? Know. <laughs> but but the, the, the thing is, when Mary ran to the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. They didn't believe her. No, they ran ahead. They did not believe her. So you see, even that time, they had to prove what she was saying was true. And even when Christ told her, go to my brothers and let them know I'm alive, they still did not believe. In Mark, 16, it says, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. So if it was a man who saw it, they would, they would have believe believed. It. But because it was a woman, they did not, they did not believe. So and I read further, it's amazing when you, when you are doing these um, scriptures and you do your research, you learn so much. Because this part of it, as I think we're going to repeat ourselves, but it's in need repeating. It said, in that culture, women were still considered mainly as chattel, a possession to bear children and to serve. They were seen as gossips. <laughs> and were never called as witnesses, as it was thought that their testimony could not be trusted. Jesus restored dignity and value to women. Thank the Lord. Women were his friends and disciples and confidants, just as were his male friends and disciples. So then, that he appeared first a woman who was given the responsibility to go and tell the others that time, that's huge. It's very big. And even now we know that, like we, if we even look at this church, mm -hmm. there are a lot of women here mm -hmm. running mm -hmm. programs, running things, ministries, <laughs> baptizing people. <laughs> <laughs> the women are at the forefront of this church mm -hmm. and many mm -hmm. churches, women are the ones who get involved. And even though society downplays the role of women, like mm -hmm. putting the responsibility of bearing children mm -hmm. as a, uh, eh, eh, that's pretty big. 
Yeah, but bearing children is a big deal. Exactly, but because on the other hand, if you don't have the one bearing children, maybe the men... They, I don't think there'd be any children. <laughs> <laughs> so, part of this whole um, incorrect way of dealing with women mm -hmm. is downplaying our importance, mm -hmm. is um, diminishing our value mm -hmm. in telling women that we're not as, as smart, we're not as, as trustworthy. Mm -hmm. All of these are not from God. Mm -hmm. These are not things mm -hmm. that God has ever said. Right. These are not things that God has ever taught. Mm -hmm. These are things, when we see it in the Bible, it's, it's the men in the Bible who have made these decisions, who have made these decrees, mm -hmm. who have written these standards. Right. But throughout the Bible, God elevates women. Mm -hmm. God shows us mm -hmm. that regardless of where women are in life, whatever has been dealt, they have been dealt with, mm -hmm. that they have a proper pace. And when we look at Rahab, who yes. was a prostitute, yes. God elevated her to be the, to have Jesus come from her line. Mm -hmm. So even, so no matter what the world has told women, God has a place for you. God has value for you. Mm -hmm. God can use women and does use women in an amazing and miraculous way. And this is one example that we don't give it enough um, emphasis that we should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Women were given the privilege of speaking to Jesus first mm -hmm. when he was resurrected. Yeah, and the thing is, God is showing us that we should not depend upon men for our to to know our value. We should depend on God. We should depend on we should depend on God because He is the one that created us. He has a purpose for us in you know in life, and we should not depend on men to say this is so or this is so because we even can reflect on when the woman was brought to Jesus who was caught in adultery. Yeah. But the thing is. Men, again, were dominant in the fact that they brought the woman only when the law says both man and woman should be brought. If they want to stone the woman, they should also stone the man. Because, the because that is, was the law says. If she was caught in adultery, she was caught with a man. She and cannot have adultery just, by herself. It was just the woman who was brought to be stoned. Exactly. And it was a big setup by the men. <laughs> so we have to be careful that we don't depend Women don't depend on men for their value. God created us. God put Adam and Eve in the garden equal. And it's because of sin why certain things happen. But God's intention was for us to be on an equal status with man because and, he died for all of us. And, and the, the fact is, no one should depend on man, human, mm -hmm. to determine their value. That's right. Everyone's value is determined by depending mm -hmm. on God. That's right. By turning to God for guidance, for a clear understanding, for reading his words to understand that we are all his children, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we were made by him, that we are called by him. He mm -hmm. knows our name. Yes. And it is God who should be the one who we focus on mm -hmm. to decide how valuable we are. And such great news of the resurrection that Jesus chose the woman because resurrection is crucial to the Christian faith as we mentioned before. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. Christ told Mary, a woman, to spread the good news that he is alive. He is alive. He died for all of us, man and woman. And that's the greatest news that Mary could have spread. It's unfortunate that the disciples didn't believe, believe her at first. But it made history. Yes. It's in the book. Yes. Yes. A lot, we, of stuff did, a lot of stuff got edited. But that <laughs> didn't. So God be praised. And we thank God that he has, Jesus Christ has risen the status of women. 
Today is Women Ministries Day. We have a special speaker, Aisha Daniels. We trust and hope that you will be blessed as we worship together. Have a good day.